Conversations with Elders, hosted by yours truly, Louis Vary Blanche, welcoming you to Glastonbury Radio 432, where we will be TED Talking in Tongues with the elders of all ages, all generations, all races, cultures, and creeds, all gender, religious, or political preferences will be honored and encouraged on Glastonbury Radio 432 Conversations with Elders where it is our treasure pleasure to roll out the red carpet of golden liquid love light to you in honor of the Queendom Come soul dancing free to life's heartbeat drum in honor of mother daughter, sister, lover, priestess, goddess, friend, sharing the blessings of love's perfect stranger, Deja Vu, welcoming you to Glastonbury Radio, 432. It's too cosmic, much too cosmic, too cosmic for me, much too cosmic. Aloha, hola, aho, hello. Hi, Fi. We are here once again with Dr. Mosin on Conversations with Elders. How are you doing there? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure always to have you with us. So today we're going to speak of color and light. And you were just telling me the laughter, color and light. Yes. And sound, you know, because these are anything which affects our sensorial faculties. Laughter, color, light, and sound. Yes. And they all have alkaline and acidic attributes they can have, right? Yes, yes. Now, you were saying in color healing therapy, the full spectrum light is, is important? It's very important because what happened, uh, the, the cones and uh, the receptors of the eyes, they only work on full spectrum. So that's why, you know, because in the back of our eyes, we have cone. Then later on, you know, if you continue this, you can get into the effect of different lights on cone and rods. Because the rods are the one, you know, that they uh, uh, recognize the hue, dark or bright lightness. And mm -hmm. then cones, you know, they recognize the color. So what happens, you know, it, it requires full spectrum for these cones and rods rods at the back of our eyes to function. So that's why partial spectrum of the lights, sometimes, you know, especially fluorescent lights, you know, in offices, you know, in the malls and all that, all of a sudden people be become very tired and non-functional. So the differentiation between cones and rods, the, the rods are related to the heel, like, you know, night and day, you know, so, you know, the, the light, they, mm -hmm. very, uh, when there is enough light or less light or more light or less light. And then cones are the deal, you know, with the, uh, with the colors. Colors. Now you said at some time you were using uh, glass. Yes. See that these are, uh, as we get into later on, there are certain color therapy that I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, it used to be seven different colors of glass that they used to use, but then, you know, it was improved, you know, and they changed it to gel. These gels are... Uh, now there is nine of them. So, for example, you notice these are the gels, you know, these are very thin gels, so it doesn't have much diffraction. Mm -hmm. And... If you notice, there is a number uh, on all of these, there is a number. I don't know if you see it or not. Like 810 is on this one. So these nine have different, um, nine different, uh, or let's say, I'll show you another one. See, these are all different gels. So combination of these gels, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four, it give, gives that healing light for different, um, different symptoms. And I'll show you the list, uh, name and list of all those scientists and books that they have worked on this past 14, 1500 years. Mm -hmm. So the aquamarine color and purple, do they have any special significance in, in your understanding of color? It's called 
equilibrium colors, where we can get into the details of that later, which is basically seafoam green and also magenta. These two, as we go to look at some of the lights and the charts and all that, we'll explain it there because okay. they have something to look at. Okay. But these are basically the gels. And then there is a good book, you know, it's this one here. It was written by Dean Shah in early 1900. You know, see, it's called um, uh, Let There Be Light. Let There Be Light, and that is by whom? By, let's see here, Darius Dinsha. You see at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he worked a lot on this. And uh, what happened is uh, before it used to be, these gels used to be like glasses like this. This is the old style. You see like, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there were seven of them, but then it, it was extended to uh, nine and maybe a couple of uh, complementary colors. So this is the whole package for light therapy. And if people want to they get involved in that. So the, the light therapy set of colors, is does it go through red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then there are two others? Yeah, well, I'll show that chart as it comes later so they can see it visually. It is nine colors. And two of them are equilibrium. That means you know seafoam green, or um, because if the look at equilibrium color, if you add all the nature's color, the sky, ocean, and everything, you know, you come to it to green, the uh, nature's uh, all the trees and everything. You come to seafoam green. Seafoam green is the most tranquilizing color, and the opposite of that is magenta. Uh, which really energizes you. So is it, is a sea foam kind of, do some people call that aquamarine? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Let me see if I have a, uh, something here to show you. Uh, I had some here, but uh, it's, uh, it's almost something like this, a little lighter. Yes, yes. You see? So a person wearing that color would experience tranquility. Tranquility. Yeah, see, the thing is, you know, it's uh, the light magenta, and then, you know, which is called the coral salmon pink. And then you have seafoam green, and then yellow. Yellow is the most, uh, uh, in the middle of all colors. We will see it later, uh, how, um, uh, even, you know, television industry, they change from basic color to really track threshold colors, which is now if you look at your computer or you look at your TV, the new one, it says that it's almost seafoam green, and it's magenta and yellow instead of red, blue and yellow. And I'll, I have a chart, we'll see that, you know, we'll discuss that a little bit later. So the, the role that photons play in human vision what 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 do we do with what does the, what happens with the photon and the human eye the human eye needs a full spectrum if it's partial the spectrum is the work of dr philip callahan that's why he was fighting you know the entire uh, fluorescent industry so finally fluorescent industry they changed it to full spectrum instead of partial spectrum. But however, it's like vibration and oscillation. We need the sunlight, not a full spectrum from a light, a mechanical. I'll show that later. Uh, so there's a difference between all of that. Well, where should we begin? And you can kind of lead us through like this uh, as a kind of a storytelling adventure on color and light. Now we start with a few laughters and jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> then, slowly, I mean, all my um, workshop, I used to give a big, first half an hour of it is, was all laughter to get people <laughs> <laughs> in a better mood, you know, to, so when they are in better mood, they are more willing to listen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we start here. So we have naturopathic color and light 
just like food, which we have you know, medicine, which we have naturopathic and uh, green medicine versus pharmaceutical or synthetic medicine, color and light, you can think, of, think about it very similar and very analogous to naturopathic uh, treatments. Now, you know, there's some discrepancies, they say, about the, the, the colors that are associated with the, uh, the chakra system. Yes. And even some discrepancy about the root chakra always gets associated with red. Yes. You, I, oh, go ahead. Do you think that that's a valid way of uh, a valid association? The root chakra is related to red. Okay, I I tried to explain this to you. I totally reject that whole assumption because in order for this chakra, let's say heart, have to be green, right? If it's green, it has to be a very constant what wavelength of the wavelength wavelength of green, correct? Mm -hmm. However, we do not oscillate. Human body does not oscillate. No biological thing oscillate. We have, we rotate. We have respiration. We, we, um, we vibrate. We don't oscillate. If I'm vibrating, I'm uh, subject to rotation, rotation, and peristalsis. That means this thing that's coming here is not a sine wave. So we have a constant wavelength. It's a vortex, right? Mm -hmm. It opens up and closes, opens like peristalsis. Peristalsis, yes. When vibration is subjected, governed by rotation, rotation, peristalsis, and not by oscillation, contrary to Einstein theory too, then the wavelength is constantly changing. It's not a constant wavelength, so it can be green. It's the full spectrum. Vibration is full spectrum. Now, if the, the lower chakra is red, that means it has to be a constant wavelength. We are not constant. We are totally premorphic. We'll see it later. Since that it goes through a, a spiral, that means constantly the wavelength changes. It opens and closes. It opens and closes. So it can be a constant wavelength to call it green, red, blue, or whatever color. So I totally reject that whole notion that they go, this chakra is this color and that chakra is that color. That's mm -hmm. totally a uh, Newtonian and uh, old Vedic assumption that everything is by equivocation and oscillation. So will, will we eventually have a template? Every, every human being, every human body is different. Is there a... Um... Yes. There's not really one color that's going to be work the same way for everyone. Yeah. I mean, if I say it's red, red has a wavelength, which is a constant wavelength. However, it's based on oscillation. That means that wavelength continuously has to be the same. But since this is going like this, like a spiral, that wavelength is not constant. It's premorphic. That means it's continuously changing. And when it gets to its full expansion, it then contracts, expands, contracts. So that wavelength that's coming from here or any part of me or you continuously changing. So it can be any given color. Now you were speaking of the uh, blue, the blue glass that you like, that you were, we were talking about the energy of, of, of drinking out of um, glasses. Cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. Yeah, because uh, the energy that RNA operates, and if you remember, I sent you some pictures of, that I have taken with my equipment. The energy that comes from the tip of our finger, which is GDV, gas discharge visualization. Mm -hmm. The main scientist, uh, Dr. Konstantin Kratkov, Russian scientist. If you look, all those pictures are cobalt blue. And the color of RNA, the RNA, which they call the ribosomal, but they usually refer to it as cobalt blue, is the color of energy of the RNA to really pick up the right amino acid to put it together in a template so the heart can regenerate or kidney can regenerate. 
You know, there's a lot of talk about these, the vaccine that they're distributing now in relation to COVID having new RNA developments incorporated into the vaccine. And that's probably not a, a subject to get involved with here. <laughs> <laughs> that's very, that, that's gonna be very, very, uh, very expensive. Yes. Not explosive. But <laughs> <laughs> Almost, well, very explosive. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would say that them's fighting words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the white hats and the black hats, you know, the, the uh, depiction of, um, I guess it's good and evil, or is it, there are really no positive, negative. No, the positive and negative is a definition of duality. You notice when the night goes and sun comes, all of a sudden doesn't change. It is slowly they creep into each other to unify a day and night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see that? Yes. You can't say night is better or day is better, but this is the creation. They're all are part of one. So, so this, this process of understanding color and you you apply it to the clothes you wear the color of the rooms yeah. the walls you you you're surrounded with yeah. yeah as you notice for example i have lights you know uh, it's in the other room but i have these projected lights mm -hmm. it depends you know what and uh, we'll talk about this sometime later maybe i just give you a glimpse of it and uh, these um when there's a projector with full spectrum it shines on you. And let's say, for example, a combination of three different gels that I have here, uh, it gives a color of magenta. Because if you look at human rights uh, issue, uh, he found the color of a pleomorphic color. We talk about pleomorphism later. A uh, pleomorphic color in order to combat uh, the host thing the cancer cells, because cancer cells are, have a magenta vibration. So if you shine magenta oscillation on them, it devitalizes them. So whether we go with the frequency of life or Dinsha or Avicenna, we notice we are desonating an environment so they are, it's not hosting them, hosting them by drinking a lot of water, it goes out of the body. So we don't want to be hosting all these germs. Right. We don't want to also kill them. It's the act of killing them. They say, thou shall not kill. It's the act of killing. The act of killing has uh, consequences. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because every organism has perfect justice uh, to be here. Otherwise, the creator would not create it. But we have to be in our own boundary of pH, boundary of emotional stuff. So we are not hosting them. It is not that they are coming in our body, we are inviting them. They are in by invitation. It's not the kind of party you want to be hosting. Right. It's the boundary. You know, for example, with certain animals, they have a boundary. Mm hmm. They live within their own community. We destroy, destroy their own community and domesticate them. But they have their own community, father, mother, and this and that, you know. And, but we destroy their community. So the same thing here. I have a boundary in my body. When a certain friendly organism are invited and certain unfriendly organism are not invited. For example, you don't want to be next to a snake because it's by nature, it may sting you. So how do you explain the alkalinity and acidity of color? Well, one of the issue of when a color becomes acidic, when it has impurity. That's why gray is impurity. We find the three components of color. Color is uh, 
uh, defined by its hue, what part of the spectrum it is, and mm. then by light, how much light it has in it, because all the color changes, you know, when you add light to it, take light to the rules. Then addition and subtraction, I will show that in a few next slide. And then what happens, purity of the color. The purity of the, any color is the amount of gray is in that color. The amount so gray, of gray. Yeah, gray makes the color acidic. Now that's why you notice very expensive cars or very expensive textiles. The more they extract gray out of a color, that color becomes more pure. I mean, that's why Porsche color, you know, uh, the red uh, fire engine, red Porsche, you know, is $25,000 worth of color. This <laughs> 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 is my Pinto is over maybe 500 bucks. <laughs> because it's gray. That's why gray color is the cheapest. The same thing with the textile, the more, the more you, so the purity of the color is determined by the amount of gray it has. In it. That's why, you know, so sometimes, you know, when things are gray, people get depressed. So mm -hmm. if I want to suppress this person, I really paint his house in gray. <laughs> no, my house, you know, I have to send it to you. I have put these healing colors on it. For example, I have coral salmon with seafoam green and yellow, those three colors. So average person, when they see, they think I'm out of my mind. <laughs> 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 well, I noticed some of the drawings you've shared with your architectural solar architecture designs that I I see those colors in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was a, a town I lived in in southern Arizona, and there was a family in the neighborhood that painted their house black. Oh yeah, I, you just we'll see. You know, uh, uh, it's the gray part of any color. Whatever color you choose, it's the amount of gray and sometimes brown because anything that gets old gets brown. Like the bark of the trees, you know, the inside the tree is very kind of fresh, but the, the dead part of it is uh, brown. So mm -hmm. those two colors is good to avoid. Grays and browns. Yes, mostly gray. Let me see if I, if you give me a second, you know, I'll see. Uh, I, I bring you something else to maybe, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, so the, the more we extract the gray out of the color, the textile, car, paint, you know, whatever, it becomes more expensive. So the purity of color is determined by the amount of gray in that color. Now, muscle testing with color, applied kinesiology, yeah, affecting the strength of the human body. Yes. Do you find that's a valid method? Yeah, it, it, it's the, it, the, there is a few things we have to consider. Now, when you're testing, the person, you know, cannot have electronic stuff or cell phone on them, you know, or the same thing with the test. Mm -hmm. It all changes that. And also, there is a grid on Earth which is called Hartman lines. They cannot be on the intersection of Hartman lines when they do a dowsing or they do muscle testing. So Hartman a, lines? Hartman lines, because Hartman lines are intersection of the electro M around the Earth. It was a German doctor who found that, you know, most of the cancer patients, they sleep in a way that their head is right on the intersection of Hartman line or carry line. And, uh, that totally devastates the immune system, especially at the time of sleep. So that's a different subject. We can maybe talk about it sometime. But that's not the direction of the head, but the what? It, it's the intersection of these lines. Usually they go from north to south and east to west. Mm -hmm. And since we have created so much electromagnetic uh, field, M, which is oscillatory field, it has created these lines, which is not very healthy. Versus the grid lines and the uh, uh, energy lines of the earth that the Chinese were, were giving a lot of respect. That's why they put the trees, they planted it on energy lines of the earth. 
Are those ley lines? Ley lines, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I have had a few friends that were blind. I worked with a couple of people that were blind from birth and others that uh, something happened after they had experience having eyesight, then they, they had something happen and they became blind. But I, I had a friend that was blind from birth and I asked him, I said, do you dream in color? And he said, yes. But in my mind, I was wondering how would he know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, to just is uh, the eye of the mind seeing those colors? Yeah. Eye of the heart, eye of the mind, eye, eye of the soul, which is much stronger than physical eye. Mm -hmm. You know, since you brought that subject, if the um, nerves to the eye is not totally disconnected, there are there have been people who recovered their uh, they recovered their sight. That's why I mentioned to PAPIMI.GR. They can refer to that site. What is that again? PAPIMI. PAPIMI. No. Panos. P like Pedro. A like Apple. P like Pedro. I like indigo, M like Mary, I like indigo. Dot GR, Garden and Randy. And P A P I M I. Yes. And that website is, is um, it's a good source for, for what now? For people. Put their no, uh, uh, eyes, eye nerves, the nerves that comes to the eye. Mm -hmm. Is it not if it's not totally uh, torn apart or disconnected? Mm -hmm. And it's just basically in dormancy, it can really recover their sight. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to colors and say spiritual organizations, a lot of people wear yellow and orange robes. Yes. But then you have some religions, their, their robes are dark. Well, it's true, you know, it just, uh, uh, that's basically a cultural issue, but mm -hmm. yellow is the most the middle of all colors. And that's why yellow is uh, a life giver. Life giver. Yeah, giving, yeah, it's very, it's, uh, yellow is very, and I use that as a base color. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know why, but my Cherokee grandmother and my mother, their bedrooms were all red, red carpets, red bedspread, red curtains. They had red in, in the bedroom. Yes, because red is very, if it's a pure red, it's very energizing. And also you notice the first color a baby recognizes is red because it's the longest wavelength and it's easier to see. Uh-huh. You know, I was trying to bring another PowerPoint to get a slide out of it, but since we are the screen sharing, it doesn't let me do it. So um, anyway. Well, are there any like, auspicious aspects to color and light that might be of interest to our listeners. Okay, let me just go over some of this, you know, and then they, I think I have something, that, the difference between color and light, when we mention it, you can recognize it's not really rocket fuel or anything, you know, it's not complicated. So okay. you know, if you go through these series, you know, um, this is you know, say by morning or hello. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, you get into alkaline light and color alchemy. So you see these colors, these the colors of these fruits, since they are fresh, is very pure. You see that? You don't detect any gray in any of them. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that first one, is that a watermelon? Yeah, this one is the- uh, uh, Or red pineapple. grapefruit. Not pineapple, but grapefruit, yeah. Grapefruit. These are all citrus and this is blood uh, orange. You know, blood so orange, yeah. And these are very alkalinizing because 
if they are fresh, outside is very acidic, but they, when they go inside the body, they become very alkaline ash because they, they are pre-morphic. Outside, they're very acidic. When it goes in the body, they become very highly alkaline. Uh, but if it's not fresh, it doesn't do that. And the seeds of these uh, are very cancer fighting because the seed is laetrol or the um, same as apricot seed or cyanide. So uh, it's very beneficial to chew the seeds when you eat these foods. It is beneficial. Yeah, because the seeds of citrus fruits is very similar to apricot seed. And uh -huh. chemotherapy is laetrol, but it's synthetic. And cyanide is the most deadly poison. It take of the little cyanide, you can kill a cat or a human or whatever. But this cyanide, since it's biological and premorphic, you can eat as much as you can chew all the seeds, and it doesn't hurt you. Actually, it has, it's very beneficial. It prevents cancer. It's like you know natural chemotherapy. Mm hmm. Well, that red grapefruit, orange, yeah. blood orange, and the lime, those colors are so beautiful. I mean, they're yeah, luscious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see that? I mean, it just uh, those colors, just looking at these colors, it kind of gives you a little alkaline feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's truly appetizing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reminds then, me of know. some of the shirts you wear. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. Create a little alkalinity here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, anyway, here's the next joke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the next joke is, you know, people about my age, you know, they have to use a different bicycle. <laughs> ah, a bicycle with a toilet. Yes, toilet seat. <laughs> you say you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, if you've ever been golfing in the golf course and all of a sudden one of the friendly bears, you know, they show up. <laughs> anyway, so... It brings us to this whole issue that uh, biomatic emoto. What is biomatic emoto? Emoto is the effects, cause and effect of gravitation because love is gravitation, is emotation, emotalization. So the sun and earth, they are emoted to each other to keep them precisely within the same distance and in such a perfect orbit. So, so love is gravitation. Yeah, emotion, like emotion. Mm -hmm. Right? And the root word for emotion, your emotion is immortality. So the earth is emoted to the earth, sun. I mean, uh, the earth is emoted to the sun. Same thing with sun is in emotion with uh, earth. That's why entire creation is in a state of gravity and emotion magnetism. In such a perfect, precise, flawless precision. And people say chaos in universe is the chaos in their mind. There is no chaos in the universe. I mean, thousand, indefinite number of um, stars you know, perfectly go around each other. Like there's an people. implicitly divine order in everything. Yes. I mean, there's no flaw in it. When they say chaos in the universe, the chaos is in their mind because they can't see perfection because they don't have the eye of the soul or the eye of the mind, and they only look at this. Here, so here. After color, light, our most common universal language. Beautiful. I mean, Laughter, you, color, and light are the most common universal languages. Yeah. Yet, with a different accent, so people can have different accent, that's their diversity. Well, you know, you go to these cultures and people wear bright colors. They don't really necessarily have to match, but they have a lot of brightness. Yeah, yeah. And they tend to be, they love music and they tend to be more joyful in cultures that, that are very colorful. Yeah, yeah. Because color being, brings life. Because can you imagine a creation or universe which only had one color or two colors? 
every time you see a different colors, it just brings it to life. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the attribute of perfect flawless creation. If all the roses were the same color, if all the trees were the same green, it would have been very boring. <laughs> yes, indeed. So when the, when you say people are in love, they're in biomatic emotion. That means laughter, they can laugh, they can see the colors, light and laughter in their language with each other. Yet they could have different accents. So that's why, you know, I said uh, there was light, laughter, color, and light till there was here. Say that again now for me, please. please. Laughter, color, and light are most common universal language. Yes. Yet with different accents. And the, 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 the man you know, that you see walking here telling his, uh, his uh, lover or beloved, till there was you. Until like, there was you. you. So when you came, you know, all of a sudden laughter and color and everything, I could see colors there. <laughs> 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 you see, this picture is like put a lot of colors into it. <laughs> yes, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we just, you know, as we get a little bit of, and then uh, you look at the universe, look at this. And where is the chaos? If there's minute micro, micro chaos in this, all of this, you know, will collide with each other, but they are flowing and going in unified field. This is unified field. There is no chaos in it. Now, this image is from uh, what telescope do you know? Is it uh, um... Hubble? Hubble. It's from the Hubble yeah. telescope. Yeah. Yes. And there is a telescope X. You know, there is a bunch of them. You know, but I think Hubble probably is the yeah yeah. Now. All along the history, there have been a lot of people that they have worked on color healing and light and sound and all that stuff. You know, so um, you notice the cavemen; they they were very uh, they were very receptive to light and dark, you know, because they know they had to wind down when the sunset was coming and they had to really get going when the sunrise was coming. So they were very responsive to light. Now those circadian rhythms. And if, then the people lived in the darkness of a cave all the time and they never got out into the light, it would have a detrimental effect on their mentality, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, because what happens, you know, one of the issues that makes the pineal gland to go from producing melatonin that puts you to sleep. All of a sudden switches to serotonin and dopamine that gets you up and going. That switch, when the first light of the morning, the sunrise, goes through the pupil of the eye, into the back of the eye and into the brain, it switches from producing melatonin to serotonin. Mm -hmm. See, so you need, but if it's a fluorescent light, it won't do that. Philip Callahan, you know, the guy, you know, who, and then, you know, uh, back in um, 900, we had Avicenna, Avicenna, then, you know, we had, uh, 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 we have uh, uh, Johann Skute, and we had Max Lucher, 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 and we have Edwin Babbitt, you know, these are people who work on all the healing aspects of life, and um, uh, Walter Russell, you know, well, you know right something here. about Walter Russell. I was going to ask you about him uh, a couple of weeks ago because I just became acquainted with his work. Yeah, Walter Russell, you know, was a very extraordinary person. He could, he could feel things in quantum, right, and just physics. And then uh, uh, Ewald Perry, you know, he was very big researchers. And then we had. Um, uh, um, and John Ott was, was the latest one. Uh, John Ott, which was really very fighting, you know, uh, the fluorescent lights. And then Dean Shaw in 1800 to early 
six, uh, 1900. He's the one who really created these gels that I just was showing to you for healing wow. wells. And then he had a uh, apprentice by the name of Dr. Kate Baldwin. Kate Baldwin was the first female who worked, brought her way to medical school because medical school used to be for only men. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so she went to the medical school, back, but after you know she went to medical school, they prosecuted her or not. And she went to medical school, became an apprentice to Dimcha. This one is Dimcha here. Uh, uh, and then he realized he could heal people with color. So instead of surgery in hospital, he started using color. There's a long story if you're going to uh, study Kate Baldwin. And then they took him to courts and this and that, you know, they harassed her a lot. Uh, but um, uh, she was very successful in them. And then, you know, John Ott, you know, was the one who really tried to tell people um, uh, how detrimental fluorescent light is because of partial spectrum oscillation and many other aspects of their light. Uh, so these are some of the names of the people who along the history, they have worked. Beautiful. On, um, the aspect of the healing of the lights and sound and colors and all that. So it's very important. So there is a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, research going behind it. And then I list a bunch of books here. If anybody wants to um, follow up some of these issues with the deeper and further research, there is a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 life and behavior of organism. Uh, Beautiful. And, uh, enjoyment and use of colors, you know. Modern uh, chroma chromatic, it goes on and on. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Now, if, if you look at the color and light, you notice one end of a spectrum is blue and the other end of a spectrum is red. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the eye, you know, when it goes through the eye, you notice how the blue goes to the right side and red goes to the left side. That's why left is more creative and the, uh, I mean, the right side is uh, uh, more blue and the left side is more red. And when you mix those things, you can per perceive colors in the brain. Now, so the, the right hemisphere is associated with blue yes. and the left with red. Yes. So and that's, the, high, that's high, the cones of the eyes, they separate the lights and send some here and some there. Mm -hmm. That's like classifying the colors, organizing, you know, for uh, uh, recalling it. Now, there are other charts, you know, how the brain uh, stores and how uh, the brain recalls. That's a whole different issue, you know, but, uh, but because everything that is stored in the brain is in terms of pulse. And then we, we call those pulses and then we translate it to color or imagine that color, imagine the shape, the form and all that. Because in the brain is all the stored like a, a hard disk, it's stored like a pulse. And then we recall those pulses and visualize the color. You know, we were, I was thinking when you were talking earlier, my uh, daughter, all my children were, were home births. Yes, uh, yes. My my <laughs> daughter was born in a hospital, but we had to go to the hospital. But there, my the mother of my children did not want to receive any um, painkillers, so she had a natural birth oh, in the yeah. hospital. And my daughter was premature, and yes. she was a bit jaundiced when she was born. Yes, yes. and she was very uh, she was premature and couldn't really nurse. So we were pumping the breast milk and I was gavaging her as a little baby. I was feeding her through um, this flexible straw. Yes. And, but she was jaundice. And so when I would have the baby in my arms, I would go to the window and let sunlight <laughs> caress her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people in the hospital though, they said, no, 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 we have lights to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, don't they use blue lights? 
Well, they use it, but again, you know, all those lights are oscillation versus the uh, light from the sun is vibration. Yes. So it's that light from the sun that when, uh, when cholesterol is under your skin, converts it to vitamin D. Well, I had to um, explain what I was doing when I was hold, taking the baby into the sunlight. Yes. You know what happens? Some of those mothers that they took a drug called DES to really painkiller during pregnancy, mm -hmm. and they didn't sense the joy of the pain of delivering a kid. Yeah? Yes. Those kids later on could not have children. And they found out it was the effect of DES, which is a bad uh, uh, drug that the painkiller they used to give it to. Mm -hmm. So now they have to stop it because all of a sudden the, the next generation, so most of those people could not have kids. Mm -hmm. Well, go, go ahead and move forward with your story of color and light here. We okay. are... Um... Now, if you, look at, if you look at, for example, these are additive. We call it additive colors or lights. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at when you take the very primary uh, or secondary lights, let's say green, red, and blue, and you add them together, by addition, they all of a sudden become white. Mm -hmm. But if you take the color, which is congelation and coagulation of light, then when you add them together, it becomes subtracted. It subtracts light from that. Uh, it's, they call it subtracted because you have subtracted light from those colors. So it becomes black. You add the paints, to, uh, the primary paint and colors together as if it's a paint, it becomes black. But if you add the same, if it's in terms of light together, it becomes white. So God has given this property to this uh, uh, rotation. Yes. You know? So now, but what happened if the, when they looked at the spectrum of the light, you see there is a threshold between uh, red, uh, uh, red, blue, and green. Now, the threshold of these colors, when they are trying to transform and transnaturize to the next color, when they go through, through their polymorphism, that means they change their vibration a little bit, you know? When you get these colors, which is yellow, magenta, and seafoam green. Mm -hmm. Now you notice the old television, if you have old television, they used to go with green, red, and blue. But the new one, now they go with cyan or seafoam green or yellow and magenta. If you look at your computers and high definition screens and all that. So gradually the industry changed to this threshold because it has much more energy and they have better saturation. So my grandfather, you know, back in the day before colored TVs were invented, people had black and white TVs yeah. Yeah. and they would put a color uh, covering over the screen. Yes. It was probably a filter. But what was the idea behind that? I mean, they, were, they weren't <laughs> getting technicolor or living color out of their TV. There was just a, a filter that you were looking through. Yeah. Most probably it gave him a little bit more clarity. I, I, you know, I have, have, I have, I've never had a TV to know what's, uh, what's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the televisions were very big, big boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was a, uh, a photon gun in the TV set. Yeah, it was a tube that used to shoot, yeah. <laughs> At the cathode ray tube, right? Yes, yes. So now the televisions are plasma screens. Yes. Because what happens in, a, and if you look at the bottom of all of them, they have three colors and it's all maybe seafoam green or cyan and yellow and magenta. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we, we talk about, so now, when the colors are pure, when somebody's emotions are very pure, they have good vibration, they have good color. You know, their vibe, 
color is the vibration. It's not just like red or green or blue or something. It's the beauty is the true base of vibration. And the more pure that vibration, the more beautiful. You see, for example, an old person, let's say 100 years old, wrinkles all over her face and everything. And all of a sudden, without she or he talks about anything, you're next to her. All of a sudden, you just feel certain vibration. It yes. lifts you up. Yes. And it could be a really old, old man, you know, I mean, full of wrinkles all over her face and everything, you know, but the vibration. So the beauty is the true, the true face. True face of vibration. Now, if my vibration is terrible, you can't be in the same room with me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if you look at the colors and all that, you know, it's just, you know, it, they have that kind of, uh, they have that kind of, uh, um, uh, vibrancy. Yes. Well, in our last few minutes here, what shall you um, share with our listening audience in regards to this journey into color and light? We can continue this next time around. Well, we are not getting technical, but the colors are very pleomorphic. And also it's a signature. The signature is defined and assist that the signature assist and direct the course of our longing to resonate with the quantum reality. The energy for long, this longing is love. So a signature assists and directs the course of our longing to resonate with yeah. quantum reality. Yeah, but then we have to realize everything is pleomorphic. There's no constant morph. Everything is pleomorphic. For example, I give you an example. Mm. The morning glory, if you look at it the first day, is kind of cobalt blue or it's uh, violet blue or this color. But the next day after it gets a lot of sun, the same becomes magenta. So that's why, you know, if you look at the morning glory, it's a good, good example of everything goes to the morphism. The very first day, those flowers are violet. The next day they become magenta. So they go through pleomorphism. Mm -hmm. So this pleomorphic is attribute of all things. Now, how can the color ever ignore the light when it continuously creates and pleomorphiates it with, ever rep with never repeating any one hue twice? Rumi. Rumi. Without okay. ever repeating Color. any one hue twice. Yeah. I mean, there is no two ever twice. That means total pleomorphism. That means everything is in rotation. It can't be seen as cellular because the wavelength is the same. So how can the color ever ignore the light when it continuously creates and pleomorphiates it while never repeating any one hue twice. Whoever the painter was of this universe was incredible, huh? No, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> beyond, 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 uh, what do you call beyond? Now, this polarity in resonation. You see that? They're in yes. towards each other. <laughs> 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 The male is asking the female for a date. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to have some polarity and resonation with me? <laughs> <laughs> so, then, you know, that brings us to the whole issue of the ideological issue that everything in uh, creation is field and flow, not action and reaction. Action and reaction has damage. Field and flow has recovery. So that's why we have to change our paradigm from pi to five. To five. Yes, <laughs> no <indeed>. more five. <laughs> <laughs> so that being, I mean, we can get into this, you know, but since your time is out, you know, but the issue of um, 
uh, spectrum and the magnetic and electric forces created in nature and the me mechanical system creates, that's a whole different issue, how huh? they are opposite of each other. Uh, anyway. Uh, so we can, you know, the color wheel, there's a name uh, that when you go to a print shop, there's a whole variety of colors that you can choose from and they have specific nanowebers, right? Yes. So when we continue this conversation, we can get a little deeper into, we can dive deeper into the world of color and light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is just a kind of introduction, yeah. Yes. All right, well, beautiful, my brother. Thank you once again for the field and flow. Thank you for the laughter, color, and light that you add to our lives. Yeah. Because <laughs> laughter brightens us up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at laughter is a color, all of a sudden when you're laughing, your vibration change for two, yeah. If you were to use the GDV while laughing, you would see that you would notice a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you see it in the hand and everything, yeah. Yes. All right, well, bless you, my brother, Dr. Mosin. It's, it's always um, incredible to, to be with you and to have you sharing with us because right now there's a lot of um i think there's a great need for laughter color yeah. and light in the world yeah. yes yeah. that's why it's healing that's why it's healing when you have laughter all of a sudden your emotional ph goes up it picks up your whole ph we will continue sending that that laughter in our in all the field and flow that we uh can emanate from our eye of the eye of the soul, eye of the mind, eye of the heart, eye of the body. Yes. yes. All right, my brother. Bless you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Five five. Good night. Well, that's it for here and now. But until we meet again, this has been Louis Vere Blanche thanking you for listening to Conversations with Elders on Glastonbury Radio 432. Bless you. Quantum physics in the kitchen sink The energy that follows the thoughts you think Quantum physics Cosmic sea, laws of nature too heavy for me. It's too cosmic, much too cosmic, too cosmic for me. Much too cosmic, too cosmic, much too cosmic for me.